question for you. You got an extra seat to uh, on, on the flight to Spain? I was hoping that uh, that coach Coach Evans could make it with us. Yeah. His, his presence is always welcome. Yours, not so much. <laughs> uh, how excited are you for that? And just kind of what went into to all that going to Spain? Yeah, you know what? Uh, you get to do it once every four years. Uh, this was the right time for us to do it. I think, you know, sometimes when you get to a new place, you want to do it right away because you think you could have these, uh, pay these dividends. But I think having uh, 10 returnees and then adding new guys to that um, gives us the right makeup team-wise uh, for us to get out of it, which is like to get out of it. A foreign trip and so with that carryover and uh, building on top of the, the, the culture that we tried to set it's the right time in your experience how close and, and how much help can you get from spending 10 days in a foreign country all by yourselves in a way yeah it can really help um it doesn't always have the result that you think and it's not really not about the games it's about the time the experience the camaraderie and continuing to build. Uh, I've been on several of these. Um, actually, the last time we went, uh, it was Spain. Uh, we went Barcelona, Valencia, and Paris. We cut out the Paris this year. That wasn't my choice. Um, but it is a great opportunity for guys to spend really quality time together, continue to get to know one another and build on the relationships that we already have. And I think what makes it special is to really have your families there and be involved. You know, everybody gets in and they say, one, two, three, family. But it ain't always the case. And uh, I think these trips help in that way. What does, though, on the basketball side of things, to have the, these kind of practices, to have a handful of games with this group before the season even starts? Yeah, um, for the returning guys, we can build on some of the concepts that we're already uh, embedded in the program and try to strengthen those for the new guys. Uh, they have the benefit of a returning group that knows the concept. So their process, their learning curve is assisted by having so many returnees as opposed to everybody learning for the first time. Um, and then to get actual practices, and there's a fine line there. We, we, we use the nine out of 10, but you know, um, you can make the mistake of trying to make it feel too much like October and I don't think you want that as much, but you do want to lay some foundational stuff. So we've had some really competitive practices. Today, we wanted to implement some things and install some things. And this group has proven to be good in terms of acumen at picking things up. We actually have been able to throw more at this group than we anticipated when we were mapping out the practices. Um, so. Uh, I, I do think basketball-wise, it has served us well already, in fact, and, and then the games can enhance that. Who are you guys playing against over there? Is it just professional teams? Or it's it... professional teams, but I, I think what happens on these trips is when you go somewhere in August, they're not in season. Mm -hmm. Not all of the players from the respective teams even necessarily live in those locales. And then the international guys may not be there. So you have to be careful uh, expecting us you know we're not going to be playing you know the, the champion of the euro league um but what does happen sometimes is you get some really good players that happen to be in town and say hey, you know i want to get a run and with those guys it's not about their team camaraderie and all of that because they know how to play because they're professionals so you can put professionals together and the concepts that we're trying to learn and the habits we're trying to form when you're talking about guys who have been playing professionally, these things come naturally to them and they have that savvy and that poise that they can take advantage of young guys' mistakes. So it, it, it will serve us well. Are you noticing in year two maybe a more solid foundation to kind of build off? He's talked about them kind of being able to really digest things really well. Have you kind of noticed that? I so do, far? I do. I, I think sometimes you try so hard in year one to reach a bottom line that you get to your the second year and you're trying to pick up the pieces because you really didn't lay a foundation. And sometimes, regardless of the record, you are in really in year two. And when you've got 10 guys returning and some carryover and some camaraderie, you, you do have something to build on. And I do think we're in a true year two. Big emphasis on bringing some guards in. Just kind of what have you seen from Chuck, Denver, BJ early on and kind of 
running the offense a little bit for you, in addition yeah. to obviously Jalen being back and, and everything? Yeah, overall skill, ball handling, shooting, decision making. You know, I, I, I joked last year quite a bit that if you were, had a football program and you had to go through a year where you were playing your wide, your star wide receiver at quarterback and your backup quarterback was your star running back, you, you would have some, you'd probably have to play some wishbone and figure it out, you know. But um, by virtue of those guys getting that experience, plus the addition of some perimeter help, uh, now they go from being your first and second ball handler to your second, third, fourth ball handler, and now you've got more quality depth in your backcourt, better shooting, better decision making, and overall skill, athleticism. So I just think, um, you know, and by and large, uh, none of those guys are seniors. So there's an opportunity for a real uh, runway to, to take off from. Since Zurich uh, got back from, you know, testing the waters and getting those, some of those workouts in, what have you seen from him? Um, some maturity, you know, I think it's a fine line with guys who are on that cusp. Uh, and I think he's approaching that. He has a reputation as a guy who's a real prospect. That creates some challenges for you internally. I hope that at this time next year, it's a no brainer. He's moved on. Um, but sometimes that can weigh on you and you start calculating the game by game in a different way. And so uh, the one thing that I think he proved is that he trusts us and he knows we want what's best for him. And in an ideal world, he'd be a lottery pick next year. But between now and then, the more focused he is on that, the harder it will be to reach it. I say, you keep watching that pot, it ain't going to boil for you the way you want it to. So just get lost in what we're doing and the cream will rise. That's the way we talk about with him. He's probably had one and a half days where his... Uh, emotional intelligence left him. Other than that, he's been phenomenal. And last year, we would have two of those a week. And it's because he was feeling that anxiety of trying to perform all the time. And, and uh, I think he's really owning the position and settling in uh, with great maturity. I'm proud of him. So it's kind of about balancing that hunger to you know, be in the NBA versus making an obsession a little bit? No, it's about really believing in who you are and competing. Mm -hmm. Just compete. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're really good, you're good enough, and you just compete your tail off to win, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But you get preoccupied with what other people think, you'll lose your edge competitively, and you won't look like the player you are, right? And so um, just compete. In the paint, I know you, know, you lost a – a kind of double-double machine there towards the end in, in FA, but what have you seen from the couple guys back as they take a step forward and also a, a couple big guys you brought in? Yeah, uh, a lot of growth. And I think it starts with the guard play because the, the improved guard play takes pressure off the bigs and it puts pressure on our – the spacing opens up the paint and creates opportunities as opposed to – uh, throwing it inside to Carl Malone and hoping, you know, people draw double teams and you play that way. Uh, we certainly want to go inside, whether it's off the dribble, off the pass, and put pressure on the rim. Um, and all of those guys can do it, whether it's by committee or if someone emerges as a low post scorer. But uh, our big thing is for those guys to be multi-effort guys um, and, and right now continue to do it by committee and Somewhere along the line, someone will emerge. Perfect. Awesome.